Hi everyone. <clears throat> I wanted to do a quick example of uh, drag force on a flat plate uh, to share with you. So uh, we learned in class that dimensional analysis gives us two dimensionless parameters. For drag on a flat plate, and they look very similar to the ones uh, for <clears throat> a blunt object. So we have the Reynolds number, which is rho u l over mu, and we have the drag coefficient, um, which is the drag force divided by l times w divided by one half rho u squared. And in this case, I need to make sure I make my geometry really clear. So we're talking about a flat plate, which has a length L and a width W. It's in this direction here. Okay. And the fluid is coming, say, from the left with an average speed U. And of course, this is going to have a density and a viscosity. Okay. And we learned just to really quickly review that um, that a laminar boundary layer occurs on the flat plate for Reynolds number greater than 100, okay? Uh, below Reynolds number 100, you don't have a boundary layer. And here, uh, we had an empirical correlation for the uh, friction coefficient, or excuse me, the um, drag coefficient, which is 1.328 times the Reynolds number to the minus one half, and I don't know why. I put it times 10, times the Reynolds number to the minus one half. Okay? Um, uh, when the Reynolds number gets sufficiently large, we have, uh, you know, our flat plate here, and we'll have some boundary layer, and then we'll trip to a turbulent boundary layer. So it starts out as laminar, and then we get a turbulent boundary layer at some transition length. Okay? So this one. Uh, here is for laminar plus turbulent boundary layers. Okay, and that occurs for the Reynolds number uh, greater than 3 times 10 to the fifth. And in this case, the book gives us this correlation 0.455 divided by the log of the Reynolds number to the 2.58 power minus 1050 divided by the Reynolds number. Okay? And so this one uh, is for both cases, right? So if I have this happening where I have L greater than LT, this one is for L less than LT. Okay? So let's do an example. Um, let's calculate the drag force on a flat plate. So calculate. Uh, the drag force on a plate um, in, let's say, water, where we have the length is 0.157 meters. We know that the density of water is about 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, which we're going to just use for this example. And the viscosity is about 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. And we're going to say that the width of the plate is one meter, and we're going to have the velocity equal to one meter per second. Okay, so relatively simple example. So the first thing we need to do um, is calculate the Reynolds number. So in this case, the Reynolds number is equal to rho u l over mu, which is the same thing as u l over nu, where nu is the kinematic viscosity. And I can get the kinematic viscosity if I come up here and I recall that the kinematic viscosity is equal to mu over rho, which is going to equal 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second, which I just have memorized. I didn't just do those unit conversions that fast. But you can check that for yourself. So u is 1.0 meters per second. And the length is 0.157 meters divided by 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. Okay, so now I need to calculate that. So let me 
put this into my little terminal here. I'll bring up a Python terminal. And let's see, I'm going to put in I'm gonna numpy just in case. So let's see, I have 1.0 times 0.157 divided by 10 to the negative sixth. Okay, and I get uh, 157 as I might expect. Um, 1.57 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, I could have done that in my head. Should have done that in my head. Oh, let me bring this. Just leave it on top here. Okay, so I'm over here. So this is uh, 1.57 times 10 to the fifth. Oops, I hit my eraser. Sorry about that. Times 10 to the fifth. Okay. So I look back up at these expressions and I say, what's going on here? Do I have a laminar boundary layer or a laminar plus turbulent boundary layer? And I have a laminar only boundary layer because I'm below this three times 10 to the fifth. Okay, so now I can calculate the drag coefficient. So I calculate CF. To calculate the drag coefficient, I just use my expression from above 1.328 Reynolds number to the minus one half. So that's 1.328 multiplied by 1.57 times 10 to the fifth to the minus one half. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to my Python and I'll put, uh, we'll just call this Reynolds number. And I'll do 1.328 times Reynolds number to the minus one half power. And I get a coefficient of friction of 0 0.00335, just to keep it to three decimal places. And uh, now, part three is to calculate the drag force. So calculate uh, the drag force. Well, I said the drag force, I got this from my formula here which was CF is the drag force divided by LW over one half rho U squared. So if I rearrange that, I get that the drag force is equal to L times W times one half rho U squared. Okay, so now it's just a plug and chug problem from here. I have one half, I'm gonna put in rho, which is 10 to the three kilograms per meters cubed. And U is, I said, one meter per second squared. And then L, I said, was 0.157 meters. And W, I said, was one meter. So plugging that all in, let's do the calculation. 0.5 times 10 to the third times one squared times 0.157 times one. And I get 78, oh, did I forget something? Let's see. Oh, I totally forgot something. I forgot my drag coefficient. So I need to put that in here too, which is 0 0.00335. So now I need to come over here, edit this guy, 0 0.00335. Let's say that looked really big. Okay, and I get out 0 0.26, oh man, I keep bumping that, 0 0.26 newtons. Okay, so that's how I calculate it. Now what would have happened if my length would have been longer? So this is, you know, how long is uh, LT, the transition? That's another question that I might ask, right? In this case, what I want to do is I want to find where the Reynolds, uh, at what uh, transition would my Reynolds number become three times 10 to the five. So if I said that Reynolds number is three times 10 to the fifth, that would be U L over nu. So what I could do here is just solve for the L, right? That's my L transition. That was kind of poorly uh, drawn. Let me come over here and just erase. But if I say that this is true, then that's the point at which my L would transition, at which my boundary layer transitions to turbulent, right? That's right at this point here, okay? 
So how long would it have been for it to transition a turbulent? Well, I say my transition now is equal to three times 10 to the fifth times new divided by u, which I said three times 10 to the fifth uh, new, I said it was 10 to the minus six meters squared per second. And u, I said it was 1.0 meters per second. So I can do that one in my head and that gives me, uh, let's see, three times 10 to the fifth times 10 to the minus six would be 0.3 meters. So if my L had been, if I had had a problem, okay, with L greater than 0.3 meters, then I would have gone back and I would have had to use this expression instead of this expression, okay? So this one would be L greater than three meters, okay? And this one is L less than three meters, okay? So that's the example I wanted to show you and I just wanted to point this out about boundary layers and make sure we are all on board with that. Okay. Oh, one more thing I wanted to do just to sort of uh, fake you out, I guess. So I wanted to point out how big uh, is the boundary layer? So if I have my flat plate here, my boundary layer is like this, I'm asking how big is this delta right there? So we showed in class that delta is approximately L times the Reynolds number to the minus one half. Well, I had a, <clears throat> I can calculate, I already found the Reynolds number, right? So L I said was 0.157 meters. The Reynolds number I said was 1.57 times 10 to the fifth. One point, oops, come over here. I'm gonna scroll down a little more. One point, I got a little hard on my wrist. 1.57 times 10 to the fifth to the minus one half. So let me come over here to my, let's see, 0. Let's see, 1.57 times 10 to the fifth to the minus one half. And I'm gonna multiply by 0.157 meters. And what does that tell me? That gives me that a boundary layer is approximately 0.000396 meters, okay? Or approximately uh, 0.4 millimeters, which is about 400 microns, okay? So this is way small, right? This is uh, on the order of like, what, 15 centimeters, 16 centimeters? And here, this is in a few hundred microns or 0.4. Uh, uh, millimeters. Okay, so uh, anyway, I just wanted to point that out that this delta, this is sm very small. Okay, very small when compared to this length L here. I just wanted to sort of show that to have, have give you some uh, reference there. Okay, that's all I have for you.